false evidence is always used to sustain lies. Millions today ignore their heritage because of this false history of Africa which is perpetuated by our own governments and propelled by many many others. It's all lies. To demonstrate this, uh, the Arab government occupying Hessian Hamid issued a passport in 1974 for Ramasa Sewepiri to go to France for more stuff. Is this the image of the great king? Did this woman alter African history? Do you know a woman artist whose images have distorted the true history of our ancestors. Do you know her name? Do you know where she came from? Before we review her name, we want to share the fake images first. A picture is worth a thousand words of truth or lies. Here is a lie. There have been five greatest rulers of all the earth in history only five. Their rule was of the whole earth. Not most of it, but the whole planet. They ruled and reigned individually, not as part of a system, but as individuals. Four of these rulers happened to have come from Africa. One of them is the so-called Ramses II. We call him Ramasase morning star or Ramesu Mariamana. He was the only one of the great who was given that title, the greatest, until they stole the title and gave it to the Greek. Now, who would it be interesting to know what he looked like, right? Ask any geologist they said he looked like this man. So he was a European. Go to this website and many other websites and you find him looks like that. Are they right? Are they wrong? They tell you this is Ramses and millions say yes. There is actually a picture of him. Then they show you this one. But let us show you his father, P1, or say T1, the father of Ramses too, looked like that. Or something is not very correct. This question on the indigenous peoples in North Africa, especially Hamid, cannot easily be settled by pictures today. Why? Because a certain woman artist drew pictures that did not fully represent the said reality. Many would say they were harmless. But eventually, this picture found their way into university textbooks. And everyone today, when they hear or watch movies with people like this, they think that these people are representing the ancient Egyptians. And therefore, in their mental thinking, they have been snared and captured by what was originally a harmless hobby that has now become a factual tool for those that are usurping or those that are ignorant of the true origins of history. Let us compare her artwork and statues of the same people she drew. They, she, she drew this one and said this is Tut Ankoma or Tutankhamen. But Tutankhamen looked like that. How do you render an image like this and paint it this way? Oh, you may say they were not uh, copper colored, but she also saw in the coffin of Tut Ankoma and his golden fast mask 1926 and the, 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 there it is there is no doubt that this person looks like the same african people that you find in africa and over the earth today they do not look like asians they do not look like europeans they do not look like people from another planet they are typically negroes or negros or africans or black people or bantus Another one, this is a fake Nefertiti, whom we know as Nefertatata. There is the bust. The statues are there, physically there, but she decided to draw her like that. Why? Why was she rendering directly 
false images from correct ones. Then they say this is King uh, Pepe. We know him as Pupa. Uku Pupa. Uh, they call him Pepe too. He looked like that. But she rendered him this way. Again, we go to Hatshepsut. Queen Hatshepsut. She is rendered there. They attack their nose. And there, they say she looks like that. You see this in the movies today. You see millions of people believing this and they're not that. This is a statue. It's there. They took off a, a symbol here of the serpent. They tried to chisel off the nose. They removed the beards. They attacked her physically, attacked her, jumped on her with the hammers and chisels. And then they are drawing this and saying this is it. Again, Queen Tia rendered this way. But she is like that. They filed here. But, well, Tia is Tia. Apart. And then they say Egyptian uh, couple looked like this. All is false. Because from the tomb of Mujaji or Mejeji, the Egyptians rendered themselves like that. All the colors of the ancient Egyptians are represented with these three here. Light in complexion. Very dark between very dark and light so we call brown black or light we have african or bantu terms for that mutema mukangabi mutsuku it's there the fake artwork dominating egyptological images and pictures and the mentality of received a boost when a south african painter known as winifred branton early in the 20th century, fueled the myth of white Egyptians and proceeded to draw imaginary people like that who never existed anywhere in Africa. Winfred Branton was there. She saw firsthand what the ancient Egyptians actually looked like. But seeking to benefit monetarily, she cynically created fake artwork of European Egyptians to satisfy some cultural emptiness. Even today, millions of ignorant people and Bantus still believe that ancient Egyptians were white people. They were black. They were Bantus. They were Negros. They were not Asians. They were not mulattoes. They were not Europeans. They were Africans. Winfred Branton. Born 1859 was a painter and the daughter of Charles Newberry, 1841-1922, immigrated to South Africa in 1864 and became a major shareholder in Cecil John Rhodes Mining Company, Tibias. She was also the South African wife of British Egyptologist Guy Branton, who excavated Lahum with Sir Flinders Petrie. So the books that she wrote found their way into universities, portrayed by Winfred Branton. History by eminent Egyptologist, forward by Professor J. H. Breasted. These are the people that you will read about in Egyptology. And she said, is, her husband served as an assistant keeper of the Cairo Museum in 1931. You wonder what's going on. So, all is fake. All the movies are fake. All what the Bible, the pictures, the images, all the stories, everything, even on the internet, is just fake. Ancient Egyptians were Negros, were Bantus, black as charcoal and as light and brown as any other African you can find on the earth today. Was he a con artist? Judge for yourself. We have given you the evidence to judge. Winfred illustrated many of the objects in her husband's excavation reports, including items from the tomb of Tutankhamun, discovered by Howard Carter. Most Egyptian enthusiasts will be familiar with the artwork that a relative to Egypt mostly consists of portraits. Her work was carried out in the early part of the 20th century and published as illustration in two volumes consisting of kings and queens of ancient Egypt. Where you get the images, you say, ah, this is it. Not no, no. And great ones of ancient Egypt, 1929. Today, these books are highly collectible, but they are full of facts. There is she. You go to Wikipedia, you can read about that and everything that she has done. In conclusion, let us remember that the ancient Egyptians were black, brown, skinned Africans. They had migrated north from Central Africa over many thousands of years and many cultural phases. 
among them the Kwadan culture 13,000, 9,000 years uh, before, before common era, the Badari culture 4,400 BCE, the Amratian culture 4,500 to 3,100 BCE, the Amratian Nakada culture started as a parallel culture to Badari and eventually replaced it. In the middle of the 4th millennium BCE, the Gezren Nakada 2 culture superseded the Nakada 1. In the next period known as Nakada 3, Egypt as by now has been split up into many administrative territorial divisions. So prior to that, it was all Africa. That's why it was all Africa right up to Mongolia, into China and into India. And across the whole earth, right into the Americas, right into Europe and all the islands on earth, it was known by one name. Tameri, the earth. This heralded the beginning of dynastic Egypt after the norms. And Egypt is in Africa, not Asia, not Europe. So these are some of the people you find there in these cultures. The Nubians, the Egyptians, Nakada 2, African goddess, uh, Nakada 3A, African goddess, dynasty 3,300, looked like that, all up to the up to 625 when we were defeated by the Persians and lost it. This is not Rameses II, but a Greek Roman invader. His descendants have just decided to give him a passport to go to his homeland. Why? Here's the proof. In 1974, an Egyptian passport was issued to Ramses II, a date of birth 303 BCE, so that he could travel where? To France for what? For examination, examining what? And restoration, restoring what? That's the same tactic we see. And there is the king. Re-education is key in identity research and in order for us to move forward. Email us and let us share true knowledge together. This is our email, join at marifado.com. This is preacher Rabbi L.M. Dumizulu of Committee, Hebrew Ethics, saying, no more lies. Have a great life. Have a good day. Thank you. Goodbye.